tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Aniasiel. Hello friends, I hope everything is fine. Today I'm going to show you something like this. It's a massive set of atoms and it's part, only a little part, what you see of the corona spike. The coronavirus has lots of spikes surrounding the kernel, the, the round, the football, so to say. And in early visualizations, I during that time, about half a year ago, at the beginning of 2020, I modeled this. I did a tutorial about how to model this. It's a very simple model, and at that time we didn't know very much about the spikes of the coronavirus. They look a little bit like mushrooms here. In fact, and this is a new rendering I did, uh, they look quite sophisticated, and they are made of three similar or maybe identical massive proteins and when they arrange each other to these blobs here uh, they have a triangular structure from as seen from the top there are about 40 surrounding the football and to see the complexity of these three proteins which may make up one spike uh, you have them here in the typical coloring of a chemical material. The origin of our knowledge of the structure of the coronavirus comes from electron microscopy and that's a black and white image. That's the reason why we actually can fantasize about the colors but here we see the structures basically and i got this from the website of the max planck institute for biophysics in frankfurt germany this is a typical depiction of the coronavirus as we've seen it many times because it's uh, free of charge it's in the wikipedia but uh, it is an early representation and the real thing is right here that's max planck again the research institute in Frankfurt and here you see lots of ideas about visualizations of these spikes. A very nice one is this one. Here you see in basically different colors the proteins and uh, they're wobbling around on the surface. Of course they're in motion all the time in real life but they certainly don't have that color and the environment doesn't look like that anyway. But the website is very rich in terms of information. Now, how do we get these things into Maya? With the M Maya kit. And the M Maya kit is a free plugin which gives you access to Im implement the proteins. And uh, this is how you go about it. You just download it. You need to create an account to download it. And once you've downloaded it, uh, you just open that file and you need to log in. This might cause a problem. In my case, it did, as you can see here, um, because, and I found out it's, it was a, there was an umlaut in my password. So I had to change my password and uh, then everything worked fine, as you can see now here. And uh, the installation goes very smoothly. And the next time you call up Maya, it's not there anymore unless you activate it again or load this file again. And it's actually quite practical to start with this file because you want to have a clean scene but the possibility to import proteins. Well, where is it? Where do we find it? Well, have a look at the very right border of your Maya window. And once the installation is finished, something will appear there. And here it is. It's called M Maya Editor. And you can make sure and use this procedure later. Go to the Plugin Manager, 
type in M, <laughs> that's enough already. And there you see the Maya, the M Maya plugin is being loaded. Or if you want to reload it with every start, you just check the right box here. And here it is, and you click on it. And then this interface opens. When you start using this plugin, you might be just interested in the top entry here. It's called PDB import. That's a protein database import. So once you click on this, you get this uh, dialog here. Quick browse to import left mouse button here. So when I left mouse button, I see the proteins which are provided or the ones I've used for my test here. But if you want to actually search for one, you click on the ta download tab. And here you need a PDB ID. How do we get a PDB ID for the Corona spike? Well, we go to the PDB. It's called rcsb.org and it, it's a portal for the protein database and lots of other things, I guess. I'm not a biologist in any way, so uh, we just type in here Corona spike and here you already see that protein which I was talking about consisting of more or less three part this is uh, already something different when you type in coronavirus you get lots of results if you search for the 2020 research and they more or less look like this. Here you can enable the 3D view, but we have a more sophisticated 3D view in Maya anyway. So, for example, let's go for 6VGZ. I copy this. I go back to Maya. And here in the PDB ID, I paste this. And I don't want to just download it. I want to import it after download. That's why I click here. And this does not take long at all and then the protein lands here this is pretty magic and i thought how is this related to the structure we know from the coronavirus as in the illustrations we've seen well nothing at all and i guess and i'm not not uh, familiar with biology in any way uh, i think this protease uh, is only working once the virus has invaded the host cell and uh, then it starts to work and create enzymes or proteins of other kinds here. In this case, it consists of two parts and they all sit here in this structure. We can open the whole set with the shift key. We have a chain A and a chain B, so we have two chains. And if we want, we can separate them and rotate them, etc. And uh, if you want to delete them because you want to load uh, a spike into your scene, now just delete this. Actually, as I can see, I cannot delete this. I need to use this interface for deletion. And uh, I click on this icon here. And now you can't see what's uh, written there because it's out of the recording frame. Rename delete. And I'm just deleting it. And then I have a free new scene. Now let's go back to the database and look for the spike. This is from a publication of 2020 by Nat Common, and this one the same. And here we have other authors from 2008. It looks quite different and probably a different kind of uh, coronavirus. And uh, we just use this one, 7AD1. We copy it. We go back to Maya. And here in the download tab, we paste it. 7AD1 and we import it and download it into the scene. It's a very heavy protein, heavy in terms of atoms. That's why Maya needs to think quite a bit of time. And here you see it now. It lands somewhere in space in the scene and here you have this tiny grid. We could go to Windows Settings Preferences and Preferences and in the middle here are the settings and we change the settings from centimeter to meters. So we're a little bit closer to our 
normal view. It's not related to the real angstrom dimensions of these atoms here. We need to rotate this group because uh, the structure on the round surface is oriented in a different way. Again, you cannot use this node here to rotate this object here. We want to have this at the top, the triangle structure, a triangular structure, but uh, you need to go to chain A, B and C in this case, the, the three identical proteins this spike is made of. And now you can rotate it all the way up or uh, with uh, snapping press and hold the key J and rotate it into a, an upright position. And that's the way we could use it in uh, rendering. Since this comes with a default light, actually Arnold does render it. Now you can change several things. For example, in the atomic structure here, you can go to the chain A and just do the manipulations with the chain A, which is this part of the molecule. Or by selecting all three of them, apply the changes to all of them. For example, the wild scale. Make them really tiny. And maybe you remember the first image in this tutorial where I basically used this illustration and moved the camera all the way through that protein. This is a, just a one way to display it. Another way is using the pull down menu here and uh, displaying it as a cloud. Uh, the alternative would be electron like noise and fuzz also very interesting. Arnold doesn't render it like this, it just uses another geometry. So we don't get, in the rendering, we don't, don't get what we actually see. By the way, the atoms here are n particles, but I haven't found out where they actually sit, because in the outliner you can't see them, and I don't have the time currently to look into them. So the point display size, you can crank this up, like this, of course, the opacity, the NB points, I don't know what that is. In the surface tab, we check mesh visibility and I selected the chain B. Now we need to play with the threshold and the blobby radius in order to actually see the polygon. Let's try this value here. Now you see the polygon coming. And I can make the atoms invisible. Actually, I can make the atoms of all the others invisible as well. So I just see this polygon structure here. Go back to surface and the chain B, that's the one I'm using, and then use another blobby radius, a higher value for the blobby radius. And then I get this polygon structure. Here you can see in the presets, default, low, medium, high. When you click on high, you get uh, other slider settings and we need to go to the blobby radius in order to make it visible again. This works much easier with smaller molecules, of course. But uh, here you go and you can easily render this. Also interesting is the backbone. Let's switch off the mesh visibility now and uh, make the atoms visible again. That's only one chain, so that's only one of these three proteins. We go to the backbone and make the backbone visible. Now we get these nice curves here, which obviously in biology are called backbones. We can make the uh, caps visible, the ends of these bones here. I don't know where to find one, but uh, you get the point anyway and a wire trace visibility and here you can change the U uh, tube width of course so we have smaller tubes now go back to atomic disable the atomic visibility and then you have this structure here which looks like a genetic uh, structure to me but it certainly isn't atoms visible again backbone invisible and biological units and b factor and morph etc you can morph one 
uh, protein into another and I think you have to upload that the two targets to the server of the protein database plugin in order to get that morph being fabricated for you. Anyway, I'll show you a couple of uh, renderings I did with this method and uh, at the very end you see a visualization which was sent to me from the M. Meyer people. It actually shows how the virus invades a healthy cell using the spikes in the beginning process. Well, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.